everyone and welcome to All of the Chug. This is Olive and I'm Taylor and today we're going to be clearing up a big question and that is what is the difference between a terrarium, a vivarium, a paludarium? So let's go ahead and get into it. So today's question, what's the difference between all the different enclosures for reptiles and amphibians, insects and things like that, that all end in arium? And we've heard of these names, they get tossed around a lot, but I think it's helpful to actually know the difference between them because when you're trying to design an enclosure, the type that you model it after will impact on whether or not your animal is going to enjoy that enclosure or whether you've set it up properly. So I'm going to start with the most obvious and easy one and maybe work our way to some of the more obscure ones that you might not have heard of. The first one, the arium that people learn about first. The first arium you've probably ever heard of and that is the aquarium. So aquariums, the uh, root there that we're gonna focus on is the aqua. Aqua, of course, means water. So this type of arium, this type of room, should be water-based. So aquariums are completely submerged in water. That's what makes them an aquarium. It's not the fact that there's fish in it, it's that it is completely filled with water. So if you fill a tank with water and include some kind of animal and plant, you have yourself an aquarium because the focus here is on the water. So you should have 100% water in this type of setup. The next one, I think this is the one that people will hear of next because it's the opposite to an aquarium and that's a terrarium. So a terrarium, the root terra, means earth or land. And so opposite to an aquarium, a terrarium should be completely dominated by land. There should be no water features here. And the thing that also makes a terrarium a little different is because it is focused on land, you should only have plants and soil in this type of setup. A terrarium is supposed to be plants only. So if you set up something for like a snake, say, and it looks like a forest and you put your snake in and you say this is a terrarium, technically it's not because that snake is a living animal and terrariums should be plants only. So really the goal is to have some kind of box with plants, that's a terrarium. Now back to our example where I said you had a mostly forest type setup where it was just plants but you added in an animal, that gets its own name. And so the third type of enclosure you could have is a vivarium. And the viv in vivarium, that root means living or alive and that's the key point. So a terrarium is plants only but a vivarium is plants and animals. So if you make an enclosure that is dominantly plants, but you add something into that, that's going to now make it a vivarium. So vivariums have a living element to them. And people tend to think of when they hear vivarium, they think like a moist kind of rainforest look. Remember by definition, a vivarium is just something that includes plants and animals. So you could have a desert vivarium as well, as long as you're including living desert plants and a living desert native animal. That is still a vivarium. So it's good practice when you're searching for enclosure ideas. When you type vivarium, include what kind? tropical vivarium or desert vivarium or somewhere in between. Now, some of the lesser known ones. We have paludariums. So paludariums have become more popular um, as these, the main thing is that they include a predominant water feature of some kind. And paludarium, the root here is palu and palu actually means swamp. A paludarium should include about 80% plants, but you're going to have a major portion of it also including water. So a common paludarium um, setup that you'll see is people will include a backscape of like mosses and plants and then at the bottom you'll have some kind of like tiny little um, pond area or a small aqua aquatic area. So paludariums are very popular choices because they include a water feature. These are great for amphibious animals that require a ton of moisture. So salamanders and uh, frogs are a great choice for a paludarium setup. Okay, our next one, even more obscure, but I'm starting to see this, especially the deeper you go into research, you'll start to see this one pop up. And the name for this one is a riparium. And ripariums are very cool because now you're adding more water to this type of setup. So the ripe in riparium, uh, that root means coastal or um, 
bank, like river bank. So uh, riparian, really what you're supposed to be having in there is actually more on the side of the aquarium, but with a little bit of land. So it's like a paludarium reversed. So now it should be 80% water and like 20% land. These again are great for um, fish aquatic setups. So if you do like the aquarium scape and you're looking for something a little different, a riparium is really cool because you're gonna have most of it being water. Riparians are really cool and I would recommend you look them up if you haven't seen them yet. And the last one uh, I'm gonna talk about. There are tons of ariums out there, but then we start to get into an idea of ariums that are used uh, mechanically or for like production or religious reasons. And because this is an animal channel, I'm focusing on the ariums for animals. And so the last one is a solarium. The reason I'm bringing up the solarium, uh, in case you're not gonna figure this out, solar meaning sun. So solariums are really just rooms for sun. So no plants, no animals, no water, just sun. So a solarium is actually a fancy term for a sunroom. So a lot of people have sunrooms. Um, there are probably very few animals that would enjoy a solarium where that's it, but it's possible and I just wanted to include it because it is an environmental style of enclosure. And the last thing I want to mention, because we've gone through all of the ariums, uh, there is a keyword that you'll also see pop up when you're looking for enclosure styles, and that word is bioactive. So here I'm going to use the vivarium as my example because that's probably the lowest step of enclosure because remember terrariums don't include animals, so if you are housing something you're going to have a vivarium at the minimum, and then you could add in water as you see fit to make like a paludarium or a riparium or something like that. So a vivarium. Um, vivariums are plants and animals, and that's the minimum. And that would still count as a vivarium, but not bioactive. The key word bioactive, what that means is you're trying to create a um, functioning ecosystem cycle. So in order to do that, you have an animal, which is giving off waste. You have plants, which absorb waste, and they also put off that oxygen. Uh, they hold moisture but you don't have the complete cycle because plants can't necessarily absorb waste as is. They take it in broken down forms, which is why we use fertilizer and you don't just throw just whole poop onto your garden. So fertilizer, how do you get your animal's feces into fertilizer for the plants? Well, you need something that's called a cleanup crew. And this is where the bugs come into play. So isopods, which are pill bugs, roly polies, depending on where you're at. So you have isopods. You also have something called springtails, which are really micro tiny, uh, but they're just little gnat-like ground bugs. They're usually white in color. Um, and you could have a, like, a whole group of cleanup crew beyond that, but the two basic most common are isopods and springtails. There are people who include things like centipedes, beetles, uh, roaches. So it's up to you what type of bug you want to include. Worms are a good one as well. But keep in mind you want a bug that is a detritivore or um, something that's going to be breaking down mold, fungus, feces, all the nasty stuff you don't want hanging around. And I am really a huge advocate for bioactive and all of my enclosures are bioactive except this one because I'm still working on the destroying plant aspect. But what makes uh, I'm a huge advocate for bioactive because it keeps your tank cycling and you actually don't have to clean it or clean it as much. It just takes some spot cleaning to the glass, but any feces that get dropped down into the soil are automatically cleaned by those insects. And then uh, the insects then poop out the fertilizer portion, which then uh, the fertilizer is helpful to the plants. It helps them grow. The plants in turn give off more oxygen and retain more moisture because their root systems are stronger. If you're new to this, it grosses a lot of people out, but I swear, I swear, I swear, get insects, just try it. It's great. You don't see them. They don't get out. Uh, they just kind of do their own thing under the ground in the substrate and they clean up everything. But remember, you do need to set up your enclosure to house everything wholly because it is one um, cycling ecosystem. So what I mean is make sure your substrate is something that the animal and plants can live on. Paper towel will not work for bioactive. Uh, neither will any kind of carpeting. This is not for bioactive. Um, bioactive is really the way to go, no matter how you set it up. You could do bioactive vivarium, bioactive terrarium, bioactive paludarium, bio bioactive riparium. 
And I'm pretty sure you could do a bioactive aquarium because they do have cleanup crew underwater. So uh, those are really my suggestions and I hope this helped and now you can build the proper enclosure for your animal. Also, don't forget to subscribe, please. It really truly is helpful. Hit the bell if you want notifications so you know when I post. And like this video and leave a comment. Uh, let me know what you, bye guys.